Welcome back to the channel. So thank you for showing all the love and support in the last video on my check-in with Ben. It's been quite a time frame passed by since then, so I'm going to take you on my journey just now, talk you through what's changed, talk you through what plans I have in future for my off-season, and also take you on, on, a, on a personal journey with me. We're currently outside the Extreme Gym just now, we're about to go and bash out some legs. I'm going to take you through the session, give you some coaching tips, and then talk you through everything we have planned. So strap in, stay tuned. So a little bit of an update from where we were last at. So check-in was three weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, and that was the leanest we'd ever been at. And the purpose of the check-in with Ben, obviously in the, the prior video, was essentially just to create a blank canvas and outline areas that we need to improve on with the physique. So from there, we've outlined that we really need to bring the chest up, bring the core up, and take a little bit of pressure off the quads and the delts, some of the stronger areas. So we've developed a new mesocycle of training. It's going to be very chest dominant, which from a social standpoint of view, for the content. Um, but today we're just going to take you through the leg session. Plans going forward with the physique, we're starting our off-season early. So calories are going to be increased very, very sporadically. Um, and we're going to progress them. Not going to be going straight off the bat and going from 1,700 calories all the way up to 3,500. We're just going to go nice and casually into a reverse diet. And that's a little bit of a tip for anyone who's finished their cut now, now we're out of summer. Don't just go from the lowest calories you've ever been to the highest calories you've ever been. Drip feed yourself at 200, 300 calories every few weeks but it's going to be good I'm looking forward to it the priority over the next wee while for this channel which as you'll see is going to be on training performance that's going to be the be all and end all we really want to add on some serious tissue to this frame and the calories are going to make these training videos look even even better so stay tuned we're going to get started off upstairs with a little bit of a warm up in and then we'll get into our working set <laughs> We're going to start ourselves off with a prone hamstring leg curl. The reason for that is just to get the knee joint activated. What we're going to base this session on is the majority of it is going to be machine work because we're going to be able to push ourselves as close to failure in the safest position that we can do compared to a barbell back squat. It's quite hard to safely push yourself to that mechanical failure point. So we're just going to start us off focusing on the eccentric and the concentric phase of this movement. We're going to kick ourselves up and it's going to be down for three seconds again just to warm up that knee joint. Now, on the hamstring curl machine, particularly when you're up in the weight and you're getting close to that failure point, your hips are going to want to stretch up to help your legs lift up the weight. What I want you to try and do is sink them hips into the seat. So how do you do that? Pull yourself in. In any machinery work you do, you need to think about the muscle that you're working. So for us, we try to think about a hamstring curl. So we want to try and have all the emphasis on our hamstrings, not lifting our hips to take that tension off of the hamstring. Pull yourself in nice and tight. Okay, so now we're finished with a prone hamstring curl. We're going to move on to what's called a pre-exhaustion set. So I'm a massive fan of these. Obviously my coach, Ben, has scheduled me into these as well. What a pre-exhaustion set is essentially is we're going to move on to a compound, which is going to be a quad-focused set. We want to try and fatigue out the working muscle so that when we go into the heavier set, we're really, really labouring the muscle that we're trying to work. This is going to be a good way to grow a target muscle. So you can do this with a pec deck, for example, fatigue out the, the chest in a fly variation and then go into a push for legs. We're going to do it with a leg extension, then move into a, a hack squat, pushing really heavy on that. Now I'm going to get the set up for you on this because it's quite high risk to injury on these. I've had two ACL operations on my right knee, I've torn my MCL, so it's important that you do these stuff safely. So when we're getting ourselves pinned in, the key aspect that we want to be looking at is this bit here on the machine, which is called the axis of rotation. Now we want our knee joint to align with that axis of rotation, so we're not basically pulling too much on this knee joint. When we're doing the movement, we want our toes to be pointed up to keep all the pressure on our quads, and we want to pull ourselves into the chair, again, to create all that tension on there. So also what I want you to pay attention to is the tempo and the intensity towards the end of the sets. Don't slack on these and think you can just come in and do your three sets as well. Make sure you're training with intent, spending three seconds in the eccentric portion, pushing through the quads and training hard.
Susie Rowe probably thinking, why is this weirdo training in his bare feet, cutting about the gym with sliders on? So I would always try and avoid training legs when you're wearing like chunky shoes. If you think about it in terms of like force generation with your feet, if you've got a big thick sole there and you're trying to do a leg press or a squat, that energy is getting passed through that sole and you're going to lose a lot of force. So you can train any sort of flat shoe. For me, I just prefer to train in bare feet. I get better connection with it. So if that answers your question, I promise I'm not a weirdo. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to movement number three, we're going to do machine adductors. These are ones that are always isolated for some reason. They're fantastic for warming up for a heavy leg session. So we're going to jump in, try and get our legs spread as wide as we can. Not sus. Try and get our legs spread as wide as we can. We're going to bring us in, squeeze for two seconds in the contracted position and bring us out for three seconds, okay? With this movement, same as all the other machine stuff we do. The handles are here for a reason. Pull yourself in nice and tight. Make sure your form's nice and strict. Big brace. Me, man. So, moving our way on to our first compound after two accessory work. Now we've got a hat squat with this. Hat squat is a very great variation that you can do for a heavy pressing movement. The reason why I prefer to do a hat squat compared to like a leg press, and it is sort of person dependent, but it's because I can take this closer to failure in a safe position. I think it also depends on the phase of dieting that you're in as well. So if you're on very low calories, you don't really want to be doing a heavy uh, squat where you're having to pick up weights, load the bar, very taxing on the central nervous system. So with this, we can adjust our feet positioning. We're going to go relatively low to target our quads. If you want to target more of the glutes, you can go a little bit higher on that as well. We're going to perform a few feeder sets just to ease our way into it. We're going to go into a top set and then a back off set 6 to 10, back off set 8 to 12. Now with this, what I want you to focus on is depth. So ideally, we want to be going ass to grass all the way down, pushing off. Now the key aspect of this is that you don't lift your heel you want to keep both feet planted and this is why we have just our socks on. This is always a movement that I struggled with after the knee operations. Typical, yeah, knee operation could have made it, all that jazz. But it used to be quite sore when I was going past a certain depth. So just bear that in mind that if you struggle with any sort of anterior knee pain, find a nice comfortable position for your feet that you can perform the movement without any added pressure on that knee joint. Nice and easy. The one thing you'll notice through this, every set, every rep looks the exact same. Don't just change your intensity and how you're performing it just because you've got a lighter weight and a heavier weight. Everything stays the same. Cardio, man. Oh, okay. So what I noticed in there is yeah, we're still in our first week of priming here. So I'm still finding my baseline numbers with all my movements. But we stacked on the weight. We went for a set of six to eight. We've got 
10, so we're out with that rep range. But what happens when we're out with that rep range, when I go next week, say I had 80 kilograms stacked on the, the hack squat, and I'm out with my 6 to 8 and I'm hitting 10, I know I can go up the weight, reset the rep range back to the 6 to 8. That's why you have your love book, that's why you track all your lifts. Just the way we aim for 12 to 15, we've hit 16, next week we go heavier. Simple as. So we finished off with our hack squat, now we're moving into a heavy leg press. I've always been a fan of this, obviously I'm glad that Ben's programmed this for me on like this is going from a heavy hack squat or a, a heavy squat onto a heavy leg press. It's going to be the best translation into generating power in that legs and ultimately the power is what's going to grow your quads. Leg press again, you can train good, you can train it very very close to failure in a safe manner. Okay, You can get good depth in it. Key aspect coaching, what I want you to look out for is that you don't go past your active range of motion. So when I'm stuck in this seat, I don't want my back to arch or my bum to lift off the seat. Keep it within my active range of motion, full extension at the top. We're going for a set of 6 to 8, set of 10 to 12, and then a set of 15, just to try and pump some volume in. Always when you want a plate, you can't find it. Found it! <laughs> Fucking took me about 10 years. Big set here. So getting ourselves started, leg press, don't treat it any differently to a hack squat. You brace properly, you pin yourself into the seat, you keep everything locked in place. On the last few reps there, the knee was clicking a wee bit, so obviously I've had a lot of issues with this right knee. Meniscus damage, ACL tears, operations, so it's important in any movement you're doing, listen to your body. If you're starting to feel that little bit of clicking or that something's just not right in a movement that you don't usually feel it, go down on the weight, leave the ego at the door, always talk about that, don't come in here think I'm going to lift it the heaviest weights and mess up your form. I say it to all of my clients, form over weight every day of the week. Once you master the form, then that's when you can start going up in terms of the weight. So we're just going to be wise. We're going to strip off 20 kilograms from it. We're just going to focus on getting a little bit more depth and just see how it feels in terms of the clicking and just monitor it during the set. But safety's first during any movement you do. You don't want to get yourself in it. Okay, let's do it again, yeah, see it over in it. Right, see this face on. Okay, so we're now moving on to our dumbbell walking lunges. Now, the coaching tip that I'm going to give for this is going to be on your lunge. You can target certain areas of your leg with this predominantly. So if you have a shorter lunge and you keep each knee at a 90 degree angle, you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on that quad. So if you want a quad dominant walking lunge, you do that. If you're wanting a glute dominant one, you're going to overextend on that and most of the pressure is going to be on your posterior and you're driving through that. Other than that, the principles stay the exact same. We're going to hit this for 12 per leg and then eight per leg and then finish off with some calf rangers. I'm going from these really heavy presses into one that sort of tests your core a wee bit, tests your balance, and a little bit higher volume. It's good, it's taxing. But we keep volume high throughout the full way. They say in terms of 
where I'm at in my current journey. I've got the calories in my body now, and they're going to be continuously increasing going into this off season. So I have no excuse not to be leaving everything on the table during my sessions. Obviously, as we push out towards August, September, and October, I mean, it's goal dependent, but definitely think it's a good time to spend in an off season. Up your calories a little bit, we focus on producing good numbers in the gym. And the final key coaching point for that, I see a lot of people when they're doing any form of split squat or walking lunge as the dumbbells are flying everywhere. When you're lunging forward, the gap you create in your legs, you want the dumbbells to stay in there. Okay, this is the center line of gravity. That's where you want it to be so that you can push forward. If it's too far back or too far forward, you're gonna mess up your set. Keep them dumbbells in that gap you create and you'll have a good set. <sighs> Stick this back. So final movement. We're moving on to our calf raises now. Obviously we're training in a relatively good gym here, so it's good that we have equipment like this. If you don't have equipment like your donkey kickbacks, or your donkey calf raises, what you can use is an elevated step and a Smith machine, making sure you're getting full all the way down and all the way back up and squeezing in that top position. Or you can use, let's say like a leg press and you can push up in a leg press. Now calves are ones that I see trained wrong the majority of the time. People have a knee bend in, people thinking they can just pulse through it. Take, again, time under tension into consideration with this one you can grow your calves and I'm relatively lucky that I've got good calf genetics and uh, I don't really need to pack on much volume in order for me to grow but if you're someone who struggles to grow calves I want you to watch this pay attention to it and then try and implement it into your own training Notice how we're not bending our knee with this one. I see a lot of people on the calf raise machine where you're seated and they're almost half squatting it. So you want to try and keep your legs fully extended as best you can in a safe position and push up on the toes, trying to imagine getting yourself as high as the ceiling as you can. These are a bastard to train, they're not fun. <laughs> they're quite boring to be honest, but if you want them nice calves, you need to add the volume into them, you need to train them correctly. That's a wrap, final exercise done, finished. So that is our leg session ticked off. Hopefully you can take some information and some cues and tips and implement that into your own training. When I started this YouTube channel, I did it with the mindset of how can I provide videos from an educational standpoint of view, but also from an entertainment standpoint of view. So we have a lot planned, we've got a lot in the pipeline and obviously I look forward to providing this consistent content. If you've enjoyed this video, let me know what you think of it in the comments. And if you want to see any future videos, again, let me know. Make sure you like and subscribe and stay strapped because this off-season journey is going to be a good one from all fronts. So I look forward to providing content for you. Thank you.